Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of Comic Book Historians. Today, we are talking about the history of cosmic rays in comic books. Like we discussed in a previous episode, Bernard McFadden and Harry Houdini had their career start off in the 1890s, and their contributions colored the 20th century with mythology that went into Superman and Batman. Another thing that got its start in that same decade of the 1890s and colored the mythology of the 20th century was radioactivity, which was discovered in 1896 by Henry Baccarel. In 1899, radioactive decay energy was detected by Paul Villard when studying radium, which was called gamma rays. After a couple decades of various scientists' experiments, Robert Millikan coined the term cosmic rays in the 1920s when he made ionization measurements that extended from underwater and above the atmosphere, citing that their source was interstellar space. It didn't take long to make it into science fiction later on in that decade in 1929. Here's a great cover to Science Wonder Stories 1929, illustrated by Frank R. Paul, who also penciled the cover to Marvel Comics 1 1939. Along with one of his beautiful alien invasion interior illustrations, the seal of a Gernsback publication is just great to see. But what matters more is what is found inside this book. When reading the interior editorial, we see that the Big G himself, the modern sci-fi grandmaster Hugo Gernsback, discusses the hidden power of cosmic rays as a recent discovery of Professor Milliken and discusses that it is a terrific hidden sense of power that someday will benefit all of humanity. This discovery and Gernsback making note of it as an imaginative inspiration sets forward a chain of events that result in cosmic rays and radiation in general being utilized in various comic books throughout history. Now, many of us know about H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds book from 1898. However, Wells lived a long life, and in 1937, he wrote a sort of continuation of the story with his novel, Star Begotten. This is an intriguing story about a man who wonders if Martians have already started to irradiate humans with cosmic rays to enhance their intelligence. After seeing cosmic rays present in pulps and sci-fi novels, it's only a matter of time seeing them in comic books like Quality Comics Smash Comics 14, September 1940, which has a character named The Ray, possibly written by Will Eisner and penciled by Lou Fine. We talked about him in a previous episode. This is about a superhuman originally augmented by a cosmic storm of light in a low-level space trip in a strato balloon. Through this cosmic ray exposure in the shuttle, the main character Terrell ascends as a new form who can shape his body into superpowered rays of light. A couple months later, in Blue Bolt 6, November 1940, by Jack Kirby and Joe Simon, we have a Modoc-like character who started out as a humanoid and evolved his mind by bombarding himself with cosmic rays. He clearly describes himself as a scientist who unlocked the secret of cosmic rays and uses his machinery to speed up his processes of evolution, where his mind became superpowered and his body needed an exoskeleton to move around. Now, Bill Everett created a cosmic ray-empowered Nazi-killing hero called The Conqueror in Victory Comics 1, August 1941. And here he is on the third cover. Although they don't visually portray The Conqueror getting cosmic rays, there's a text insert that comic companies would use to get cheaper shipping from the federal mail system that described his cosmic ray origins from a scientist. Note the topics shown are really the same as what Gernsback said in 1929, that cosmic rays are healing and energizing and improve a person 100% both physically and mentally. Now in 1946, Jerry Robinson and Ken Crossan made Atom Man with a suit that would inspire Captain Atom and Dr. Manhattan later with his origin as a scientist who works at an atomic institute and was exposed to nuclear materials and gained superpowers as a result of his exposure to that radiation. This doesn't stop. There's another cosmic ray mutation alert in Charlton's The Thing 15, 1954 with art by Steve Ditko. It is again the same scenario as with the Conqueror, but instead of a human, it is with worms. Ew. The scientist bombards artificial rays to mutate and augment life forms into larger and stronger sizes with graphic and deadly results. 
Bill Finger, co-creator of Batman, wrote a story with art by Dick Sprang in Batman 127, 1959, with an artificial Thor, the Thunder God. In this story, Thor was transformed into existence when a man's hammer is hit by a radioactive meteor. From space, the man touches a hammer, gets hypnotized into thinking he is Thor, grows in size, and his hammer returns to his hand when thrown, and he steals money to pay for a temple for Odin. In that same year, Jack Kirby and Dave Wood made the newspaper strip Sky Masters 1959 and discussed the unpredictable effects of cosmic ray exposure for these astronauts. Sky Masters went for realism rather than science fiction, however they make several references to the unpredictable effects of cosmic rays on humans, and that it can infect an entire team of astronauts. In this case, it drove them nutty, crazy, and space-minded. Due to the quest for realism, no actual superpowers were produced in this strip, and also no strip characters were harmed in the making. Radiation-induced cosmic superpowers again went to a level similar to that of the 1940s Ray character when Steve Ditko and Joe Gill depicted Captain Atom being transformed into the cosmically powered Captain Atom in Space Adventures 33 1960. This radiation-powered cosmic superhero served his duty as a patriot for the American military, and served the whims of Dwight D. Eisenhower. In Space War 10, 1961, a similar story was made at Charlton, likely by Joe Gill, and definitely art by Steve Ditko in The Comeback, about atomic radiation ascending a man to cosmic traveler status. Nothing like seeing a page or panel where Silver Age radiation transcends a human into the supernormal category. Far out, man. I'm in, like, outer space. Later on in the same year, Fantastic Four 1, 1961 was released and created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee when our fabulous foursome gained their superpowers by cosmic rays in a manner described in previous comics as well as by Gernsback in 1929. These cosmic rays actually jumpstart the entire Marvel Universe with mutation, superpowers, eventually costumes by that third issue, and intergalactic adventure. To think it all started with cosmic rays for Marvel Comics. After Kid Flash, Wally West premiered in Flash 110, 1959. Several issues later in Flash 125, 1961, Barry Allen teaches him about how their time treadmill is cosmic ray powered and able to take them into the future or the past. Whoa! Hulk 1, 1962 by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee takes the radiation empowered character to an angry level with gamma rays, again said to be man-made radiation, igniting Bruce Banner's cellular potential into the incredible Hulk, with anger, destruction, and anti-heroism to follow after. A perfect meld of monster and hero. Amazing Fantasy 15, 1962 by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee have a spider made radioactive by artificial means through human experimentation to bite Peter Parker, turning him into your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Many consider Spider-Man's costume to be the best superhero costume ever made. Made truly yours by Steve Ditko. Gold Key's Doc Solar, Man of the Atom 1, 1962, is by Paul S. Newman and Bob Fujitani about a scientist who gains radioactive powers by absorbing too much man-made radiation through an act of atomic sabotage. He goes on a variety of radioactive-inspired adventures and saves the world over and over again. Another radiation superpower alert, Doom Patrol 106, 1966, negative man backup origin story by Arnold Drake and Bruno Premiani, where he is bathed in radio energy in the sky and given structural and superhuman changes to his body. Negative man bails out the Doom Patrol time and time again with his radioactive base superpowers. In 1986, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons combined various origins of the previous characters and augmented Dr. Manhattan with radiation in the same manner as described by Hugo Gernsback in 1929 and evolved him to the next level, becoming an envied and pivotal character in this 12-issue miniseries. It actually brings up interesting concepts of evolving almost to a godlike state and losing touch with one's humanity. 
After the 1980s, it seemed that the idea of a radiation-induced superhero was not as in vogue as it was earlier in comics, and likely due to the height of the space race, America's fascination in the cosmic rays that it peaked in the 1960s with some activity before and after. Unfortunately, we know now that cosmic rays and radiation bombarding human genes in an uncontrolled fashion creates cancer and all sorts of life-threatening conditions. The effects are more like when you shove an egg into a microwave for three minutes. And don't try that at home, kids. However, we can dream that it can evolve humans and their minds and bodies to the next level, and it all started with little blips of radiation that were picked up in 1896 with the detection of gamma rays in 1899 and coining the term cosmic rays by Robert Millikan that got science fiction thinkers like Hugo Gernsback all aflutter in the 1920s with pseudoscientific possibilities of what could be in store for us next. That active imagination became a recurring theme in science fiction superhero comics throughout the 20th century, and although it's not as fashionable now, it is nice to stop and smell the roses so we can appreciate another interesting aspect of the 20th century in comic books. Cheers.